Hi, I'm Robin Martin. Today we're going to make shoe pastry. Shoe pastry is used to make things like chocolate eclairs, cream puffs, and of course that amazing French wedding cake, croque en bouche. So I'm, I've got 100 grams of butter here and I'm adding one cup of water. And I'm going to take this to the stove and it's going to come to a rolling boil. So mix that up and away we go. A full rolling boil is when the mixture boils all over, not just at the sides. When the mixture has come to a full rolling boil, remove from the heat and add the flour all at once. Mix that in and beat it with a wooden spoon until the mixture comes away from the side of the pan. You'll see it forms like a ball. Look at that. So that is ready to be set aside now to cool down slightly because if you don't cool it and add your eggs straight away, you will scramble the eggs and the shoe paste will be a disaster. When the mixture is cool enough, add your eggs one at a time and beat well after each addition. Beat it until the egg is combined into the dough. So you can see one egg combined, add another egg, so our last egg is mixed in. At this point you can actually transfer your mixture to a food processor but it needs to be a strong one with a big motor or a heavy duty cake mixer. This sort of cake mixer is no good. What happens is the mixture goes up and gets stuck in all the beaters. The engine on this is not grunty enough to deal with this thickness of mi mixture. If you're going to use um, manpower, gym power, to beat this, um, that's great, but take it off the board now that the pot has cooled down and put it onto something like a dishcloth or something. And that holds the pot firmly to the bench. Now comes the bit that you wished you'd been to the gym for three weeks beforehand because you've just got to keep beating this until the mixture is smooth and glossy. Now we're ready for shaping. You can actually use teaspoons and make little cream puffs out of this mixture or you can use a piping bag and make chocolate eclair shapes with long ovals or you can use your teaspoons to make long shapes. It's actually easier though in a um, piping bag. So fold your piping bag over and get your mixture in. I probably find it easier to use a rubber scraper to do this. Look at that beautiful shiny mixture. And then just work it down in the bag. Now if you want to be really really precise on the back of your baking paper you can draw lines and that gives you a guide so as each thing is um, the same length, but I find that once you get into the rhythm of this, you, you find that it's actually just easy to go down like this and click it off. Alternatively, if you don't want to use baking paper, it's very gooey to finish off, but you can actually just put these onto a greased baking tray. So you can see you get into the rhythm of it. I've tried using a knife to cut it off. I've tried using scissors. A good clean finger is about the same. Or you can just do little cream puffs. Or you can do little circles. But if you're going to do the circles, I would really recommend that you actually draw a circle on to follow. So once you've got your shoe paste made, you can make just about any shape you want. Depending on what occasion you're serving your eclairs or your shoe puffs or your shoe pastry, you can make them any size. I've made some small ones here and I've made some larger ones also. Shoe paste rises by steam, so when you take it out of the oven, it's still got some steam trapped in there. It's really important just to cut a little slit in the side of your shoe paste, and that lets the steam escape so they don't get soggy on the inside. Leave them on a tray to cool, 
once you've put the slit in them and when they're cold you can actually store them in an airtight container or you can put them into a plastic bag and suck out the air and keep them for a number of weeks before you're ready to use them. For these and more great baking ideas go to hansels.co.nz